I'm Mary Dillinger from the Northern Arizona VA Healthcare System, and this is the Veterans Views and News. I have with me today Allie, Sue, and Carolyn. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for Mary. having us. So, whole health. It's a big part of the VA. We're trying to get the word out to everybody, and you guys are all part of the whole health team, yes? It is. Yes. So, I'm, I, I'd like to start with just kind of an overview. What does that mean, whole health? And uh, really, Mary, it's a whole shift in perspective that the VA is moving toward. Um, and the idea is instead of the, the medical find it and fix it model, mm. uh, we want to move more toward instead of asking what's the matter with you, to shift it just a little into what matters to you. I like so, that. Yeah. So um, now that would seem like an easy switch, but really there's a lot of education and learning that goes in with it. So um, if you go to your primary care provider or you walk around the VA, you may see these Health for Life posters. I see. Yeah, this is the wheel, yeah. and I'm familiar with the wheel. Yeah, so it's the whole health wheel. And um, what's going on now is that we're trying to get veterans acquainted with this approach so that they can really take charge of their health care and decide for themselves what's most important to them, what they want to work on to improve their health, and then be able to bring that to their provider and start the discussion there. Um, it doesn't mean that tests won't be run or important things will be overlooked by a physician, but what it does mean is that the veteran is included uh, in a structured, meaningful way in that conversation, and they're prepared for that uh, discussion. Um, so when you're looking at the wheel, um, me is in the center of it. And um, so there are um, many programs being rolled out right now at Navihix that help veterans learn this approach through a personalized health inventory. I know we do it at the DOM with DOM veterans and really help like a them. Like a checklist type of it thing? It is. It's, okay. a, it's mm -hmm. a form that people fill out uh, in a measured, structured way where they can really um, assess what's important to them. Why do they want their health? if they have diabetes, if they have heart disease, if they have behaviors like smoking, um, that to ask themselves, well, why do I want my health? Maybe I want to, you know, take my grandkids camping. Maybe I want to go on a European cruise and hike all around. Um, maybe I just want to dance at my daughter's wedding. I don't know. But whatever it is, there has to be something meaningful individually to the veteran that mm. really motivates them to preserve their health and get involved. And so um, the, a personalized health inventory helps the veteran to do that and to learn about and assess themselves in all of those areas. And okay, then, I think a lot of veterans don't necessarily think about that. They are used to the doctors, as you said, you know, ask you what your problem is and they might say, well, I, I'm tired all the time or, or I get headaches or whatever it might be. But now here right. it's, I think the checklist helps you think internally yourself. Like, okay, what is it I'm hoping it for? It does. What, it helps what, you take charge. I, yeah. I love that approach, and I think the veterans will uh, be really receptive to the idea that they can empower themselves with working with the team. They do, and, and I'll just say it really does work. Um, I do this in my own program. I have um, a health coaching group that uses this, um, this method, including the personalized health inventory. And um, within that group, I've had people um, start with a very small goal of you know, walking for a few minutes a few times a week, and they've moved forward to um, walking every day and then upping it to uh, com combining jogging and walking. And I've had veterans who have lost 40 pounds who have uh, gotten off diabetes medications, um, who have really taken charge. And um, it's a great thing to see that people getting excited and involved. And it really teaches people um, how to set health goals and how to follow through with mm -hmm. them, taking small steps and then observing, how did that work for me? This is something I thought I wanted to do. How did that work? So there's no way to fail because you're just learning more and more about yourself and what works for you. And uh, the other thing that's great about it is that it's great for providers because they feel less burnout. Because the they're, person... they're not trying to pull the information mm -hmm. out of the veteran. Right. Instead, the veteran's coming to them and, and saying, saying, this is what this I want what... to do. So it's right. not just like, you need to lose 40 pounds. You need to stop smoking. You know, if the, that's an important goal for the veteran, boom. Right. And we asked them, we asked them, I had a veteran the other day and he was saying he'd like to walk more. And I said, 
you know, well, what would help you with that? And he said, well, I have a knee brace on order. So he was already taking charge of his health by ordering this knee brace. And he already knew that that was coming and he was looking forward to that in the new year. So it also helps them manage their physical health Everything. and get the care they need. Mm -hmm. Everything. It's really amazing. And with the wheel that what we teach is that blue ring, um, providers are your like your consultant, right? Mm -hmm. You come in and you say, this is what matters to me. This is what's important for me to my health. It may not be the doctor's agenda completely, but it doesn't matter because when somebody starts to make improvements in one area that's important to them, for sure it starts spinning into other areas. Like the, this particular veteran, you know, obviously she was wanting to improve her diet or lower A1C and boom, the exercise kind of did that. And then it in inspired her to eat more healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, then, you know, people find, oh, I'm getting better sleep because I'm exercising. Or, Darn, and maybe that wasn't even on the agenda. But, you know, sleep was a problem, but that, to them that wasn't a priority. But they end up fixing a problem that, that they, you know, weren't even focused on all yeah. by, by fixing other areas. By being in the whole health arena. Um, and then just one thing finally with this approach um, uh, the the uh, the idea is that we have um, we have and want to promote more complementary and integrative approaches, which I know you guys will be talking about too. But um, things like yoga, massage, um, things like chiropractic, acupuncture, um, a variety of different complementary approaches that can really help uh, people take a uh, charge naturally without just immediately going for medications or drugs I know a lot of veterans say that they <laughs> they, they either options. have been on medication and they want a way off or, or just have never been a medication type of person and would like yes. help with something but without medication. Exactly. So um, to really expand and offer more of those approaches so that people can take charge and have some more complementary um, options you know, instead of just medical options. Um, so uh, I've seen it work. Um, there are more and more, and will be more and more educational opportunities for veterans to learn this approach. Um, and, and they don't actually have to do anything for this, right? They can just tell their provider, I've, you know, I saw something on yes. Access 65 about so I whole learn health. More and about, I want to learn more about that whole health wheel and how to uh, learn about taking charge of my health. And we do have right now um, uh, veteran employees who have been trained to assist fellow veterans in classes on how to use this wheel, how to use the personalized inventory. So that is a resource that's available now. Um, and um, all a veteran would need to do is just um, ask their provider or um, you know, uh, just look around and there's posters and, and ways to find out more about um, getting involved. And I know a lot of the teams have uh, people that are on the whole health committee. Yes. So maybe even just go to your team. You might get lucky. Somebody on your team, that, that nurse might be one of the people that's on the whole health. Right. And they can and, say, yes, absolutely. And they should, they should know about how to hook people up with those, um, with those classes. So um, I'm, I'm totally excited about it. I think, it's, I think it's the best thing to come along in a long time. I really do. So I'm really, really supportive of it and um, love using it with veterans. Well, that is awesome. And I know that, Sue, you have like aromatherapy and different methods like the ones that Allie was mentioning that, that you work with. Yes. Um, I am so excited that our VA in Prescott has supported uh, aromatherapy coming into our VA. Uh, it started with the executive leadership. And uh, one of the primary places where we started is in the domiciliary. And I'm one of the um, RN staff nurses that works in the domiciliary. Um, I am also a certified uh, clinical aromatherapy practitioner. There's actually a certification for that. <laughs> um, Didn't and, know that. It, yes, and um, I took a course uh, for healthcare uh, uh, practitioners. Uh, uh, physicians could come, uh, uh, pharmacists could come, nursing can come, massage therapists could come, and it was all for being able to use essential oils in a clinical setting. Uh, because there are certain things that you need to know. Uh, sometimes there can be some interactions with medication. Sometimes uh, mm. there are certain oils that you cannot use uh, with certain conditions. So it's very important to know some of these things in the clinical arena. Uh, so I act as the uh, clinical aromatherapy consultant at the VA. And trainer. 
and the trainer, yes, we have developed um, a training program there for the staff. The program at the domiciliary, which is where our veterans go, it's a residential recovery uh, treatment mm -hmm. program. And they um, are our veterans who are trying to recover from the use of uh, drugs and alcohol and have some mental health diagnoses. And this has been one of the most awesome experiences of my life to be able to do this and to be and able you came back to train the to staff. To do this, right? Because you, yes. you worked here, I you retired. retired. <laughs> you came back. So when you worked here before, you yes. were just a, an RN yes. working <laughs> over at the hospital. Yeah. You came back now and now this is what you specialize yes. in. Yes, I was one of the clinical educators when I worked here before and now you know I work as a staff nurse. So not only do I get to train the staff in the different areas and the program has expanded from the domiciliary, but I also get to um, be able to uh, teach the veterans about it there. And what Ali was talking about with the empowerment, it, it has been just so heartwarming to see how the veterans have been able to empower themselves with this complementary modality. Complementary means in addition to. You know, we don't take anybody's medications away. They still take all their medications. Alternative means instead of. So sometimes that gets a little muddy. Um, so I always like to uh, delineate that. Um, but they, you know, sometimes uh, the veterans have been a little skeptical when we first started. Mm -hmm. um, um, the uh, aromatherapy, and especially clinical aromatherapy, is the use of essential oils for a therapeutic purpose with a measurable outcome. Uh, because that's what we do in healthcare. We like to measure outcomes, right? And um, if somebody comes in and they have a headache, uh, we can use lavender and peppermint uh, for a headache, offer them that, and they'll tell us, you know, uh, what their headache score is, their pain score. It might be a three or a four, and if it comes down to a two or a zero, we're very happy about that, and the veteran is usually very happy about that. But if they're having a headache, they can come to us and get an essential oil. If they're feeling anxious or stressed, they can come to us and get an essential oil. And, you know, they know that that's available. We teach them uh, the therapeutic properties of the oils that we offer them. And they can take care of themselves in that way. And they... And you can use these oils in like a diffuser. It's not, you said, you mentioned that like this one I see is like a lotion that you put yes. on your hand. This is um, a topical use uh, of essential oil. This is in an unscented lotion. And there's a couple drops of essential oil in there. So the veterans can apply this to themselves if they're having pain. Um, some of them like to use it at night and massage it into their feet before they go to bed topically oh, okay, to okay. help them sleep. To I help can see them like diabetic patients. I know that, that feet pain is a yes. big problem for diabetic patients. And um, we use lavender and frankincense. And those are two essential oils for therapeutic properties that can help heal skin as well. Okay. Uh, one of our practitioners... Uh, likes to use something like lavender or frankincense in an unscented lotion when our veterans go on a rec outing and they're playing wow. softball and they have a little mm -hmm. abrasion. So she okay. says, okay, go to Sue and, uh, you know, get some lavender or get some uh, frankincense in the lotion um, and it heals everything up very nicely. Uh, so we are using it uh, that way as well. We also offer it to them on a cotton ball. It's very low budget. Uh, we don't use diffusers. Uh, in the domiciliar or in the clinical setting, usually we, those are fine to use at home because of other veterans and, you know, we're never sure about what other people's sensitivities or allergies are. And if we're using a topical application, we um, do a little patch test on people's skin. Oh, because, so you make sure they don't, they don't get allergic reactions. Because there can be reaction. sensitivities and allergic reactions and that sort of thing. And that's what's important to know in a clinical setting. Um, absolutely. So if they have a cotton ball, they can either keep it in their little baggie oh, and okay. inhale it like that. Or and they, they do. Can, and they I've had do. them come with it in their pocket and, say, yes. and had it for weeks and they love it. Or they can walk around and, you know, inhale it. Mm -mm. Just take a little mental vacation, you know, inhale <laughs> it. They can... <laughs> um, Put it under their pillowcase or put I it love you, you beside their bed. This oh, one, yeah. this one is so eucalyptus, cool. so we're using this yeah. a lot. Um, d during the season, we have uh, tea tree and eucalyptus. And the essential oils were chosen because of a lot of the symptoms that we see. Aromatherapy is kind of a three-pronged approach. You look at the symptoms that um, you're experiencing, and then you look at the therapeutic properties of the essential oils, and then you look at what aroma you like. Uh, some people have cold or respiratory symptoms, and they may hate tea tree. Tea tree is very mm, strong. Mm. It kind of smells like turpentine. It's very medicinal smelling, but they'll love eucalyptus. So we'll give them eucalyptus instead or, or vice versa. And a lot of our veterans have come up with their own combinations. 
They have their mm. own special blends. Uh, we had a vet in the beginning when we were doing this, and he was trying to quit smoking. Uh, there's been some research studies done about black pepper, which is one of our essential oils, um, that it can help with nicotine cravings. And, of course, now uh -huh. we're tobacco-free yes, um, yes. in the domiciliary. Uh, they uh, use a lot of nicotine patches or gum or lozenges, but the aromatherapy just adds a whole other natural dimension um, to the smoking cessation. And one of our vets decided to combine black pepper and peppermint, and he came mm. back to us and he said, oh my gosh, he said, I inhaled that and I tried to smoke a cigarette and it tasted terrible. And he said, I smoked oh, so four it's a less it's cigarettes a different kind today. Of a right. <laughs> As opposed to trying to, a lot, a lot of times when people are trying to you know, smoke and sensation mm -hmm. and different things, they try to get you to find other things to focus on. This yes. was different than that. Instead of getting the idea that you wanted a cigarette out of your mind, mm -hmm. you found a scent that kind of yes. worked for you that made that no longer appealing. Yes. And it helped the cravings. Peppermint is uh, very high in menthol. You know, it's one of the biochemical mm -hmm. constituents in the essential oil. So he put that together himself. Um, a lot of our veterans have insomnia. They have the post-traumatic mm -hmm. uh, stress disorder diagnosis. So, um, you know, headaches, insomnia, that's all a part of that. And some of our veterans have, we call it the, the beautiful trifecta. Um, at bedtime, they'll come and get frankincense and bergamot and lavender combination. And they have told us that their dreams are so much better because nightmares is also oh. a part, part of that syndrome. Yes. I, I, can, I can imagine that the, you know, this is helpful, not just during the day, like you were showing yes for at night. Oh, when You're absolutely. trying to shut your brain off and, and go to sleep and something to help relax it and soothe, soothe you into yes. a good sleep. And it's natural. It's like being outside. It's like having a garden around. Uh, one of our vets uh, opened up his drawer one day and he said, I still have some of these cotton balls with some of this scent. And I open up my drawer and I'm, I'm standing back in a garden. He said, and this helps my anxiety and my stress. Um, I have worked with one of the treatment coordinators. Um, she does a training uh, about when stress goes bad. And uh, I was uh, asking her if she wanted me to come in and talk about frankincense because it's very good. Frankincense is very good for stress and anxiety. It's been used throughout the ages for meditation. Um, one of the famous oils for that. So, um, you know, what we have is uh, keep calm and inhale frankincense. Ah, I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. So they'll come down and they'll say, okay, Sue, I need a little frankincense. Um, or I'm feeling kind of angry and I'm feeling like I'm getting escalated. So it's that whole empowerment thing and it has actually helped them and they help each other with it as well. You know, they'll talk to each other and they say, well, I tried this or I tried that. Um, some of our veterans um, uh, come from in being incarcerated, so they don't know what to expect mm -hmm. and it makes them anxious and they'll become nauseated. So we'll offer them peppermint when we first meet them and they will gratefully take it and it just makes their nausea go away. Um, we also put some brochures together. Um, they get information about the aromatherapy program when they come and are admitted. Um, it's a very brief program and they learn about the seven oils that we have. And then we also like to share a brochure for when they go home that has a lot of information for them about the oils that they have used or we use and what to look for on a label, you know, where to buy them in Prescott and then how to uh, use a dilution for a topical application as well as how to use it in inhalation. So we try to do a lot of education. Um, so they, so they know the what to do when they go home with it. So they're yes. not sitting here saying, all right, I guess this is what I do, that there's no guessing there. They right. understand the process and how they're supposed to use it and how often and how it, how it works. Yes, exactly. That's great. That is so nice. education is a big part of that. Um, but uh, again, I can't say um, how wonderful it has been that um, uh, Nava Hicks has supported this. Um, we started training uh, staff in the domiciliary three years ago. The program has been in effect for three years, and I audit charts at least twice a year. The outcomes just get more and more amazing. And uh, a year, let's see, it was 2017, I trained staff in the Community Living Center. Um, this last year in 2017, we trained staff in the intensive outpatient program. Um, I'm going to be training some of the staff for 3B, which is our acute care um, mm -hmm. unit. Yes. yes, and then we're also looking at expanding it into primary care. Meaning that 
a veteran goes to their team, mm -hmm. they go to see their primary yes. care for their normal appointment, they can mm -hmm. mention, I saw yes. this on the TV and something about aromatherapy and they can yes. help get them, uh, you know, in connection with you so that yes. they can uh, work on this. Cause it's, so they don't have to be seen at mental health or be treated in, right. in mental health capacity to right. utilize any of these services. Yes. Okay. And people can get in touch with me if that's what's needed, yes. But as far as empowering our veterans, it's been um, an awesome offering for that. But it empowers staff as well. And especially in the evening, I usually work an evening shift and our providers go home. Uh, so a lot of times an essential oil, you know, will work for somebody uh, without having to access our emergency room. Yes. Need needing to put even more stress on them possibly by yes. making them go to the emergency department yeah. to get seen yes, and exactly. get a whole workup mm -hmm. done. You could say, why don't we just... Right. Come sit down. Let's, let's try. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's try something like this. Um, uh, one of our uh, uh, really interesting stories, uh, talking about the veterans being a little bit skeptical sometimes, one of our veterans came to me and he said, I have a lot of indigestion and, you know, I'm feeling a little bloated. And I said, well, how about if you um, try some black pepper? You know, I'll just do a little mixture of black pepper for you because it's very, very good for indigestion. You know, mm -hmm. we put pepper on our food. You know, very good for your digestion. Sure. Uh, what does a restaurant have when you walk out? Well, they have peppermints, Pepper. right? They right. Do, so true. yes, even though it's a little bit of apples and oranges, um, you know, it will it can still help. And he said that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, I called over and uh, we got some medication for him, and um, he came back to me about a week <clears> later <throat> and he said, well, I talked to one of the other nurses. And uh, I, I thought, well, I'll have her mix up some black pepper. And he said, I used it because you can massage your belly clockwise because that's how our intestines goes to help, you know, everything kind of move. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, it really works and it's natural and I love it and I'm a believer. Nice. And I can see I can see on the beginning some of the veterans are skeptical oh, or something mm -hmm. sounds because it's so much different from the norm. Right. Yes. That it, they're yes. like, I don't know if that's um, like your mm -hmm. the rock therapy that you did for the VA2K we had. Right. I had never heard or seen that before. I, of course, I was at the VA2K. We had uh, lots of volunteers there and, and all the veterans that came. And they said, Carolyn's going to do this like rock therapy. The heck is rock therapy? Okay, I'm going to learn something new. And I saw what she was doing. And uh, my kids volunteered, so they came and they did rocks. And I saw veterans doing it. And everybody, the, the, the smiles on the faces were just like, Oh my gosh, and, and it was catching because more and more veterans came over to the tables and the usual tables that would have uh, veterans coming to them, the table that shows all their sugar so that they can make sure they you know don't eat too much sugar. Those tables weren't getting as much attention. Everybody was over at Carolyn's table and they wanted to, so I did, I did it. My kids did it, they said, you gotta do it. It is contagious, okay? Mm -hmm. And I literally was smiling the entire time and all it is is, is paint. Okay, but it was well, it's, it and was, it's creativity. It is, and it's, it's novelty. Yes, and so mm -hmm. and if we know one thing about veterans, they like to help each other and they like mm -hmm. to encourage each other. Mm -hmm. So it's a community type of thing, but it's um, you know it's integrative healthcare because it's using arts in healthcare, and that's um, something that's really moving forward right now. And I get to do some of it through my work with the whole Health Champion Committee. So I've been um, working with different groups with the wellness committee mm -hmm. um, and the um, pour painting with the rocks is one that we've done. And uh, veterans have given me great feedback and um, have I'm really I'm a veteran and I will give you that feedback. <laughs> it was. Exactly. Well, it's just um, what I do with the um, art making that I do, I, I do it for stress reduction, for self-reflection, for um, self-expression, for relaxation. And so that's, you know, it's, it's actually, um, I'm not an art therapist, um, which is a whole discipline in itself, of course, but um, art making in itself can be therapeutic. And so um, with the pore painting, you just do a mixture of paints. I do things, I've been a longtime craft maker and looking at the research um, that I'm getting into right now, the people who are putting this forward more and more are people who experienced it as an individual, um, whether it's knitting or painting or, decoupage or whatever they do. So with the rock art, um, basically that came out of uh, 
expense, trying to minimize expenses. But you just mix paints in a certain way. It's called a dirty pour. Mm -hmm. And um, I've done it. I've showed, shown staff. I've done mm -hmm. some team building with staff with it, mm -hmm. um, you know, to bring out communication and collaboration skills. And mm -hmm. um, it's been a lot of fun. And so the veterans have picked up the ball. And um, I had a, someone from a rec therapist contact me from the Dom. He's like, a veteran wants to know where you get your supplies. So they go to, I gave them all my resources where I source things. And they went out and made, um, he and a, another group of veterans made, for all the DOM staff, they made gifts with it. I, I went over there and I yes. saw them. And they were, they're beautiful. Yes, they are. They're wonderful. And, and they that, have them and, in their and rooms. And I got to do a little bit of an interview with a couple so of the nice. veterans. Nice. And they, um, they were astounded because these were veterans who said they never did anything art-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so they weren't sure it was going to come out. And they didn't, there was no pressure for them to feel like, oh, I have to make this look a certain kind of way. Art, I don't know. I think most people, when you think art, you feel like you have to make it look like something a certain right, way. There's, right. But they said that there's no pressure with it. I think that's yes, one of the yes. upsides. A long time ago, I um, went to a talk by a veteran who um, was at, it was at an art center in Ashland, Ohio, and he became a writer, but he had put off treatment for PTSD for many, many years. Mm -hmm probably get emotional if I talk about it, but he said people are art scared or art scarred oh. as part of his talk. And he <laughs> okay. said he came, he decided to get treatment for PTSD. He was going back for a degree. He had written a book and it can take you there. That's how art can take you, you know? So I'm just really excited about it. I just want to share really quick. Um, this is an Australian set study. It said art engagement in mental health promotes recovery, relaxation, reduces stress, reduces anxiety, reduces depression. Elderly patients experience um, reduction in depressed mood, enhanced self-worth, promotion of positive aging, um, and arts programs have been linked with improved motivation, improved self-image, hope for the future, improved self-esteem. Well, we, so, we have art programs at the hospital. We have we the do. Creative Arts Festival, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. It's always yes. the week of yeah. Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and I've met some phenomenal artists. I didn't know what to expect the first we time have, I saw the Creative Arts Festival. We have amazing and I, artists. And it all usually starts off with something small like that where somebody wasn't aware that they really right. were creative or had that in them and they might have started something with the the dirty, the dirty paint doing that. Or... Well, and we have really amazing artists. I've seen some artists work in the Dom and then there's, I've heard tell of beaters and all kinds of Native we have American so many. Arts. They all make it to the national mm -hmm. level, and we have winners at the national. Yeah. Right. And the national one, there's over 600 pieces of art. Isn't that and incredible? For the, for the VA that make it to the national right. level, and we have winners at the national level. So that tells you that we have some really, really creative veterans. Right. And when I bring it forth, um, I did a lunch and learn, and I was doing it geared towards staff for self care. Mm -hmm. And I was accessing research that was um, not for people who have mental emotional health issues, but just people who want to maintain health. And I tell people it's the process, it's the product, and it's the press that you receive from people saying, look at that, that's amazing, you know? And just the process, it's mindful, it's relaxing. You come out with a nice product. So it's a, it's a lot of fun and I hope to um, be able to do more of it. I think it's great. I think everything about whole health is great. Whether, you know, mind, body, soul, how everything is, is coming together. And I love that it's, to help the veterans, you know, not not us telling them what's wrong with them. It's them telling us what we can do. And I, I love that. As a veteran, I love the idea. And I love the idea that veterans can, you know, come to us. You tell us, let let us see what works as opposed to us saying, well, you're going to do this. Right. No, let's see. What, you know, maybe there's someone who doesn't want to do your art thing, but you have other methods. There are many, many methods in integrative health care. And um, there is actually a Society for the Arts and Healthcare. And so it's evidence-based. All of these are evident. Yes, all of these are evidence-based. And so, you know, I love that we are offering our veterans evidence-based integrative health care. I love that. And, and, and we, it sounds like it's, it's only going to get bigger. Oh, like there's it's, this no is, doubt this about This is it. just going to continue to grow. Yeah. And I am excited to see mm -hmm. how much more. And I'd love to have you guys on the show again mm -hmm. in a few months to see where we're at after this one. And um, I hope that you guys get a lot more veterans contacting you for working the whole health wheel and trying to understand it and get educated on it. And if uh, I get anybody that calls me or lets me know, I will put them in contact right away me so too. that we can all, you know, as, as, as a community work together to get this out. Absolutely. Sounds great. Well, thank you so <laughs> thank much you. for being on the show. Very thank you, Mary. And thank you for watching Veterans Views and News.